Okay, so wanted to uh, take some time to uh, do another recording on Snowflake, uh, the Elastic Data Warehouse in the cloud here, and just uh, use this um, uh, uh, use this demo to uh, address one of the one of the biggest questions and one of the most uh, uh, frequently asked questions that I get about Snowflake, which is how do I get data from my local data center, from my local environment, into Snowflake, right? Um, this will be a hands-on demo, but I thought I'd start with um, uh, a demonstration here and, 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 a, and, a, and an image just to kind of explain things and put things in context and perspective. So if you look here at this diagram, various data loading scenarios here, some basic ones. Uh, we have up top here data files that would re represent, you know, some data that's local in your data center, local to your environment. Of course, we have, you know, we all know is the cloud here. And within the cloud, there's a big rectangle. This rectangle is basically S3 um, that can be divvied up into two parts here. The blue section is uh, S3 buckets that we maintain for customers um, that are private S3 buckets in a Snowflake account, right? Uh, they're called a user stage that you can access. Um, or you can have private S3 buckets uh, that customers have themselves, right? And from there, of course, Snowflake is a data warehouse, a, a relational database that exists in the cloud. And, you know, from this S3 environment, either a, a user stage or a private S3 bucket, uh, you can subsequently parallelize a, a copy into the database. And so what we're going to do here is we're going to show some of the basic ways to do both, right? So I'm going to take um, some CSV files that I have locally and put them into a user stage and then subsequently copy them into, you know, uh, and load them into Snowflake. I also have some JSON data that I'm going to take and put it to a private S3 bucket and also put it into Snowflake as well. So um, with that, let's let's just take a look at this, right? So um, I'm in Snowflake. You've seen this environment from from the other video that I did. Um, I just brought up a little uh, local script that I have here to um, uh, uh, that I'm going to use to load, you know, put some data to stage some data up there, and then to subsequently load some data. So um, you know, so I started with the picture here. I kind of put it in context. Um, but first, want to you know, let's take a look at the files that we want to actually stage and move out to the cloud, right? So um, I have here uh, a folder that has some Chicago crime data uh, 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 here, right? It's just, it's a simple CSV file. It's one gig, a little over one gig, 1.3 gig. Not massive. I can certainly just, you know, put this up into the cloud, load it as is. You know, uh, uh, performance would be just fine. One of the things that I've done here, though, and this is just something I tell customers to do, is, is what you want to do is take advantage of parallelism on load when we're loading data in Snowflake, right? And so to do that, I tell people, let's you know take you know a big file here and divvy it up into lots of smaller files, right? And again, on this example, you know it, it, it wouldn't matter, but when we start talking about hundreds of gigs and terabytes of data, you, we want to start splitting things up. So I took this Chicago crime data set; it's a CSV, and I used GSplit just to um, uh, split it into 20 little files. There's a whole bunch of ways you can split data, right? And I won't necessarily cover that topic here, but um, you know, whether it be through a GSplit utility or through an ETL tool, there's a bunch of ways to split up your data into even chunks here. Uh, but really, what I did was I just uh, you know split it up and then zipped them up, uh, and this is what we want to now stage and put these files out into the cloud, right? Um, uh, so I'm going to do that. And so to do this, one of the first things I'm going to do is I need a command line utility that's going to allow me to put the data up into my Snowflake user stage. And the way to get that uh, is to use the SnowSQL uh, command line client, right? So if I go to help here and go to download within my UI, I have a command line client here that I can download. And I've certainly, I've done that already, so I'm just going to show this to you. Um, so I'm just going to come back over here, open this up here. I'm just going to open up SnowSQL, which is my command line client, and I'm going to log into it. Okay, and when I come into it, again, it's just a command line utility that we would all expect for a database to have. Uh, I'm just going to uh, uh, list what's in my directory right now. So if I just do list... Uh, and just look at the root of my directory here. I see that I've already put some files up into the cloud, right? It's, it's up in my user stage 
in Snowflake. Behind the scenes, it's an S3 bucket, right? But but this is what it looks like. I've I, I already put that big giant. Uh, this is a different file, actually. This CMS data. I got some weather data out here too. I'm gonna put all of that Chicago crimes data out in here uh, 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 to load. So if I come back here, um, uh, I'm gonna use just this simple statement here, and I'm gonna copy this. Come back over here. And basically, all this is doing is a secure put of uh, these local files, these these crimes files that I divvied up here, and put them into a folder called crimes within my user stage. And so um, I'll just hit OK here. Um, a couple other things to note is um, on the command line utility, I can set the parallelization uh, as well as whether I want auto compress on or off. By default, it's true, but as a force of habit, I tell people to just zip things up themselves. Uh, uh, and then, and then uh, you know, set this to false in, in the command line utility. Parallelization could go anywhere from 1 to 100. Um, you can hurt yourself if you set up too much parallelization where it doesn't make sense, right? I'm on my home Wi-Fi, and I'm using uh, uh, my Mac here, right? So 4 seems to be a sweet spot. Um, I, I can go up to 100 here, uh, but if I don't have, you know, enough throughput, enough processors, what have you, um, you can start hurting yourself by by setting up too much parallelization, um, but it can be configured. So if you have a whole cluster of stuff that's moving data, you can certainly do that too. Okay, so a real simple put command is really all it takes to move data from a local environment up into the cloud. And again, what I'm doing here, just to you know put it back into perspective, I'm loading some local CSV files through this put command into a user stage, just putting it out into the cloud. That's really all I'm doing here. Okay. So while we finish that, I'm just going to come back over here um, and then just talk about the other data that I want to have uh, that I want to put up into the cloud as well. Um, so I've got some semi-structured data that I also want to put out here. So um, if I look, uh, let me just bring it up here. I have another folder here that has a whole bunch of JSON data, um, pretty, pretty simple, straightforward stuff like logs. Uh, you know, logs one to logs 30 here of all this JSON data, right? Um, if I want to look at how this looks, I've got one of the examples up here. It's just a whole bunch of files that have, you know, a, a whole bunch of records. I think each file has a thousand JSON uh, records in here, right? So this is what we're going to load. You know, we're going to stage it up into the cloud and load it into the database as well, right? And that's all of these files here. So to do that, you know, again, coming back to our diagram, Right. This is where I want to take some local JSON files, some local files here, and this time I'm going to use the S3 command uh, uh, utility, which is just a public utility that you get, you know, from Amazon to move data to S3 private S3 buckets. And I'm going to do, move it up here and then uh, load it from there later too. So, if I want to do that, I can come up over here. Um, in fact, let me just take my little command that I know here, and let me also look at. You know, here's my, my private S3 bucket. It's really got nothing in here. And let me just refresh this. <clears throat> and there's nothing in here, right? So what we're going to do is I'm going to, uh, let me see where we had it here. There it is. I'm just going to put this command in here. Again, S3 command to do a put of all of those log uh, logs data, those J that JSON data set, put it into my private S3 bucket. <clears throat> and there it goes, right? It's going to start moving those 30 files over, and it's going to do so pretty pretty quickly, too. Um, I'm getting a little error here. Oh, there we go. Uh, it should start moving them over now. No problem. It should happen pretty fast. There we go. So while that's working, uh, here, they're going to go real fast now. While that's working, I can also come back over here. I can see these other CSV files were moved up to my user stage. And now, again, if I were to uh, do an ls of my directory, I can see now that I've got those crimes uh, uh, files sitting out there in my Snowflake user stage that I can now copy into the database, right? Um, same thing over here. Whoops, let me come back uh, to the other window. I can see that I loaded up all of these S3 files as well. So when I come into here and refresh this, Here's my private S3 bucket that now, now has all of that data. So again, what did we do here? I just moved some local data to a user stage and, and also some local data to a private S3 bucket, right? Now I want to start loading this stuff into Snowflake, and it's pretty easy. We've, we've seen this before, right? So let me just minimize this here. 
minimize that, minimize this, give myself some real estate here. Um, now we can start um, loading some data. Real quick here, I did create a stage. And again, if I go back to databases, uh, look at my database here, uh, and look at a stage that I've created. I've created a pointer to my private S3 bucket uh, called BMG S3. So when I list this now, when I run this, uh, it says I don't have a current database. I have to have a current database in order to do work. That's right. And then I will also select my warehouse here. Let's try this again. There we go. So here's all of my data that I, that I now put out in my private S3 bucket. So now loading data is real simple, right, guys? So I can select anywhere in this statement here to create this crimes table uh, uh, in my database that's been created. Certainly if I do a count star from here, I should get zero records, and there it is. Uh, same thing for storing, uh, uh, you're creating a table to store my JSON data, right? I'm going to create a table here called cust logs with one column called variant to just hold the JSON. And that's uh, created. And again, if I do a select count star from it, there it is, nothing in there. Now I'm going to load data from my user stage using a file format that I created called CSV1, which is just basic common delimited type stuff. Uh, but basically, you know, load into my crimes table everything from that stage data set, right? And so I'm going to run this, <clears throat> and this is going to take about, I'm going to say about 15 seconds to load 5.7 million records worth of data using our extra small cluster. I suppose I should have used the small just to make it look a little bit better. It would have gotten done in seven seconds or so. Here we go, right? And I see that the, the status is partially loaded. I purposely did this um, because I wanted people to see what it's like if something wasn't loaded perfectly, right? That's one of the other questions I get asked a lot. What happens if it errors out? And there's things that I can do, you know, with my on error clause to say, hey, should I continue? Should I stop? Should I just skip that file and move on? Um, I have a couple different options there, right? This one, I purposely set it so that these files had like some extra uh, blank lines that aren't being parsed. And that's what we're seeing in all of this. But the, all of the data really did load, you know, out of, you know, 288,000 records on each one here. You know, I'm seeing one or two lines uh, uh, on, on this here, right? Um, but all the data did load. In fact, uh, we can take a look at that in a little bit. If I ran this again, by the way, just to kind of show this to people, if I tried running this statement again, what's going to happen is that you're going to see no rows processed, which is, uh, or no files processed, which is really nice because if I look at the load history of that crimes table, I see that it gives me the MD5 checksums of the files that have been loaded. So that means if I tried loading the data again, Snowflake is smart enough to say, listen, I've seen this file already and absolutely nothing has changed to it. I've already loaded it, so I'm not even going to bother. And, and, it, and it won't do it again, which is really nice. Okay. Now I'm also going to load um, this data that I put into the private S3 bucket by saying, hey, copy into the cust logs table from that you know, private S3 bucket, file format is JSON, you know, I put a pattern here to look for logs. Uh, let me just run this one. And there we go, all of that data loaded nice, nice and clean here. Um, and now we can just do some testing. You know, count star from crimes, I should see 5.7 million records, there we go. Uh, we can have a little fun with the data set here. Uh, take a look at some of this. So all the Chicago crime data from 2001 and 2015. Um, you know, robbery, battery, you know, where not to walk in Chicago, that type of thing. Um, again, ANSI SQL to do a group by here. Again, using the smallest uh, 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 warehouse cluster that we have, extra small, it, it burns through this stuff pretty fast. Um, also, if I want to start looking at semi-structured data, I loaded that data into that cust logs table. So I can start doing, you know, a select account star, loaded 30,000 records. Um, you know, I can start you know, saying, hey, let's select everything from that table. Here's what's interesting again, right? 30,000 records, I'm gonna list them all here. Here's how I'm actually storing semi-structured data. And I open this up and, and here it is, right? Here's how I'm actually storing it, which is really nice. And now I can start writing SQL that walks the tree of these elements to get things back. So uh, here's an example where, um, let me comment this out, um, uh, where we say, hey, select from, uh, you know, from that cust logs table, Here's where I'm looking at, you know, actual little bits and elements in here. Um, I can say execute, and here it is, right? So I, I started getting, you know, structured data back. And again, uh, I like to tell people we can do pretty well with 
unstructured data that's that's within comment fields, right? So, um, you know, here's where I'm actually, you know, searching that those freeform text fields, that comment field for some some criteria. And let's see what we get back here, right? Again, just found 109 records uh, across 30,000 pretty much instantaneously. And again, nothing's cached or anything like that. But, um, you know, what I wanted to show here again is that I quickly loaded data from a local environment up up to Snowflake through one of two techniques. Um, uh, either the user stage using the command line client or through the S3 command utility to load it into a private S3 bucket. And that's really all there is to it. Um, one of the other questions that I do get from people is, well, what happens when I've got, you know, dozens or hundreds of terabytes of data? Uh, that initial migration could be really um, painful. And so I will just say that there's a few options and alternatives for data migration with Snowflake. This isn't uh, an exhaustive list. There's some other ways to do it, but I just wanted to kind of mention uh, for initial migrations of data into the cloud, you got things like AWS Direct Connect, which basically give you a high bandwidth connection directly into AWS's infrastructure for moving data from your data center. Um, I haven't actually seen Snowball yet. I'd love to actually see this. It, it came out a few months ago. Uh, but that's basically a little hardware uh, device that you plug into your data center. Uh, it, it, you you put your your you know 50 terabytes or so of data onto this device. It's ready to be shipped. It's fully encrypted. Uh, and then when it gets to AWS, uh, they they put it right into their data center, and boom, it's pretty much instantly loaded. And then a third route to go is if you want to go the software route, there's something called Attunity uh, CloudBeam for S3 which again is a software tool that really specializes in ultra compression of data. So less is going over the wire up into the cloud, um, you know, puts an S3. And again, as we saw before from there, you can copy directly from S3 right into your uh, Snowflake uh, uh, database. So um, that is that. That's what we wanted to show people, um, uh, just simply moving data from a local environment up into the cloud and it's Snowflake. So hope you found that interesting. Uh, we'll see you on the next demo.